So if everyone's ready to go, I guess we'll we'll kick things off. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, I really appreciate you joining us. Thanks, thanks, um, uh, speakers, for coming on and joining us for one of the first international BSV meetups. Uh, so first, I wanted to say this is a crossover event between the uh, San Francisco BSV meetup and the London Bitcoin meetup. Um, with support from the Bitcoin Association, of course. So uh, today we're going to be talking about peer-to-peer uh, -peer on BSV. We're going to be talking about using proof of work in novel ways. Um, and we're going to be uh, talking just generally around those, those subjects and implementations um, of both peer-to-peer -peer transactions and proof of work in applications within the BSV space. Um, at, with some of the founders of those companies uh, and engineers from those companies. Um, so uh, some of the speakers, I, I guess we should, should uh, go through who's with us today. Um, so I'm joined by my co-host in San Francisco. I'm, I'm, I'm Dagan. Um, I'm of the London Bitcoin meetup. My co-host um, is uh, Ryan X. Charles. Um, Ryan, could you run us through exactly what the sort of format is today, just to get our audience familiar with what's going to happen? That'd be great. Sure. So my name is uh, Ryan X. Charles. I'm founder and CEO of Money Button, um, and I'm basically representing San Francisco. So I'm one of the co-organizers of the San Francisco BSV meetup. So we thought it'd be cool to merge these groups together. The idea about how this is going to work today. So of course, this is a bit of an experiment. We haven't done this before. So what we've done is to you know, bring speakers in from all over the world. Uh, the ideas that we'll go through in roughly 15 minute segments plus a Q&A section for each group. So we're gonna start with the discussion about what is the new peer-to-peer -peer, uh, technology between Money Button and Handcash. Uh, we're then gonna do an interview with Craig. So we'll interview Craig Wright about the, uh, the whole motion of peer-to-peer and allow him to, to fill in his sort of perspective on peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions and anything else in that respect. Um, we're moving on to um, uh, Ava, uh, Money Button Engineer. We'll talk about Invisible Money Button, the new product we launched. We'll move on to uh, uh, Daniel Krawitz, who will talk about Bruce, uh, Boost Proof of Work. Uh, and we'll move on to Mark Wilcox, who will talk about uh, 21E8. So we'll have... Uh, uh, you know, basically a, a sort of presentation and then Q&A for each section. And the one with Craig is a bit of an exception, and that would be more of an interview with Q&A. So we're hoping to allow people to ask questions, and we'll ask those questions to the uh, to the speakers and the, and the interviewees and all this stuff. Fantastic. I just wanted to add that we also have uh, a series of questions that have already been asked uh, via Bay Mail. So if anyone wants to add to that list of questions, you can send a bay mail to sflondon at moneybutton.com. Uh, send, send your messages there and we'll, we'll pick them up later on um, in correspondence to the, the various speakers. That's, that's fantastic. So uh, first up, we're going we're gonna to start on a discussion with, with uh, uh, Ivan Rafa and Mige. So um, I don't know which one of you wants to take control of the screen, but um, go ahead. If you have a presentation, please, please go ahead and otherwise uh, take it away, guys. No, actually, like, we don't have exactly a, a presentation, but what we're going to do is just uh, mention a little bit about this. So a, a short time ago, we made a joint uh, development between Hangar Money Button about peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions between our wallets, but it can be adapted to Bitcoin in general. So, well, first, Ivan is going to explain you what it was all about and what we did, uh, what we did. Um, well, I just said you with Ivan. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll start this uh, presentation or conversation oh, sorry. more or less um, <clears throat> with ex with explaining uh, maybe a little bit about from different perspective. Whenever we hear from peer to peer um, things in Bitcoin, people immediately jump to either network top topology or technical right so maybe we'll start a little bit more with uh, domain perspective because uh, even if we look at the title it says peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and even the first sentence starts a purely peer-to-peer -peer vision of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution so in the context of of at least abstract and and an introduction to white paper um, 
which in my opinion is trying to address how to solve microtransactions on, on internet, right? So how can we reduce friction um, and certain barriers to the amounts we can send between each other? So in this context, um, if we think about what what is cash in general, is physically cash is something which we physically give person to person. Um, so it's something that inherently even show it has value. Like if you see a $50 bill, you can basically trust it that, that, it, is, is it, that it is what it is. It has value. You take it and you don't need to go through intermediary. So Bitcoin is trying to do something similar, but, but it is digital in the end of the day. So, so when we're talking about IP to IP transactions, uh, I mean, peer to peer transactions, we're basically trying to solve this. Like person can give transaction um, output directly to another person. Um, and this person can basically with um, Merkle proofs has fair um, amount of, of sec security that actually got what it wanted. Uh, of course, uh, it has incentive to, after that immediately goes to the miners network and, and gets extra proof that he got what he wanted. Um, but um, inherently, I think we're trying to imitate cash here. So I think uh, one profound um, like cornerstone to it is peer to peer, person to person, not, and it's something which is decoupled from miners network, which are also peer to peer network. But when we're talking users, this is something different. So we don't want to talk about it in the same way, right? Or, or mix even those two things together. So maybe that will be my short introduction. And and I think now Rafa will go to expand this. Yep. Yeah, so with, with that concept, we should review how, how things are, have been working for a few years in Bitcoin and which is the problem that it represents in for uh, application developers and and anyone that is trying to create any kind of infrastructure. So what has been happening is if you have a wallet, uh, what people have been doing all, all over these years is they've been listening to every transaction that is happening inside the network and then comparing that transaction to all the addresses that belong to the wallet and try to match if there's any address that belongs to this wallet. So this is the way that you try to find if any of the transactions happening in the network belongs to your wallet. So imagine that you have a service like Money Button or Handcast, where you have thousands of users and they have thousands of addresses and you have to be constantly monitoring and scanning the blockchain and you know going for this approach. So first of all, it's something that I, I have now fresh because it, I've been in the webinar that Owen from Enchain, he, he was explaining the concept of the Mandala network and how Bitcoin is very similar to that. So in the first layer, what we have are the miners. In the second layer, we have the application layer or infrastructure layer. And finally, in the third layer, what we have is the users or um, the people that have a wallet and they tra transact to each other. So in this approach that we've been having all over these years is everyone is connected to the networks because as Ivan mentioned, this difference between the peer-to-peer -peer network and the concept of peer-to-peer -peer is what people is been getting wrong uh, all this time. So what we needed to do is um, connect the second layer of this Mandala network in a way that Money Button is connected directly with um, Hankas, so every time that there's a transaction between Money Button and Hankas, we communicate to each other directly. So we are going peer to peer in that case. So this is the work we've been doing, and maybe Miguel now can you know keep going, giving more details about the implementation and how things are related to PayMail, which is another technology that we've been um, you know using for for one year. 
That's great. I, well, one thing so I know that our audience is really interested to hear more about is um, exactly how peer-to-peer -peer enables us to scale more effectively. Uh, yeah. Maybe you want to answer that, Rafa? Uh, yeah. Me... Yeah. Okay. Just maybe just quickly. So the main difference is how things were going before. Applications have to scale as the Bitcoin network grows up, and right now you just have to scale as your users grow up. Meaning, if you just have ten thousand users, one million users. You don't care about the volume of the transactions or about the size of the block. You just care about the transactions that are happening uh, between your users or um, the users that you have, uh, how they are transacting inside the network. So that's like the main difference. We needed to break the coupling between the uh, application network and the miners network. Completely. So basically, in order to do like what we wanted to have uh, for this was have all those benefits that, Russia, that Rafa mentioned and having this concept that, is, that Ivan explained before of if we make our services and our uh, wallets interact to each other, we don't need to scale anymore at the same uh, growth that the network. We just need to scale as our user growth. So the first thing like as, as Every time that you need to communicate in a network, one of the first things that you need to, to, to solve is the address problem. That is basically know where you have to send uh, your data, right? Because, for example, if I want to send money to, to Rafa and I want to do the, this peer-to-peer -peer approach, I need to send the money to somewhere. And well, for that, you need, uh, in order to solve this address problem, you need something like an identity system. And it happened that we already have something like that, that is payment. Payment fits perfectly with this. You can use the payment protocol to query for, if I want to send money to Rafa at handcash.io, I can use the payment protocol to query where Rafa expects to receive their money. And then I can just send the money. And the money in this case is a Bitcoin transaction. Bitcoin transactions that, that sign and a completely signed Bitcoin transaction is cash, is digital cash. So if I manage to get that cash, get to Rafa, that's basically it, the problem is solved. So what we did for this was first create a payment extensions that allows a, a user to send a transaction directly to a payment, basically. And then we figure that in order to make this work as good as we want, we need to be able to, like, it would be nice for a wireless to have the ability to basically use special addresses for this that are not monitored. Because if we continue creating addresses that we need to monitor, we still have the same issue that we had before. So, we created an, another payment capability, which we call P2Pay uh, payment uh, address or something like that, uh, payment destination, sorry, which works exactly for that. You can use that capability to uh, basically know how to build a transaction that you need to send to someone. So that's what we did. We based on payment, we created these uh, small protocols that are basically a fundamental piece to continue working. In these protocols, you can send uh, payments, but you can also send metadata attached to, to those payments. And that allows to do a lot of things. You can do like more complex transactions that just uh, send to an address. Uh, you can add complementary data or whatever you need. And you can use this to build more complex things like VIP270, for example. Like even when we started, like VIP270 was what, like the discussion started with something like VIP270, we realized that we didn't need that to do what we needed. We needed to solve the case of the micropayment thing from person to person. So this is what we solved. And this is a fundamental piece that can be used to build uh, more complex things like VIP270 or, or whatever. So 
this is basically how, how we address this problem. Like the main issue for to, to build a transaction was how do I know where, where I send the money? And that was like naturally solved with payment. Uh, if I understand correctly, it's really important to know where you're going to send the money, especially if you are uh, sending, I mean, you're literally sending the money peer to peer in, in this case, because the Merkle routes are being sent as well, right? So I, I guess I, I wanted to, from, from my perspective as an app developer that uses um, uh, BSV exclusively, I'm curious how this changes my sort of, from my perspective of people using Baymail to send a message can now do that peer to peer, or how how do you envision that changing application well, developers from an application developer's perspective? Well, actually, payment is a protocol that, well, I'm sure that also Rafa and Ivan are going to have their comments there. But payment is basically a protocol to intercommunicate uh, wallets. So something to, that to me is extremely nice about using payment and, and about the way that we implement it is that the final user actually doesn't care too much of what is going on. So you are sending money to a payment and that, send, that, that action is being much more efficient because it's being like we are using the P2P protocol and everything, but there wasn't any change for the application developers or for the users. It's just sending money to a payment. And that's important because if we were using something completely different, the application developers that you in Baymail or all the other apps should have to change their code. And that was not the case. Like we made a change that is transparent for the users on purpose. Like it's the kind of things that ideally with like all the infrastructure should change we are like in the middle part of this, like we are in certain layer of this graph and everything from this layer to the outside should keep unchanged. We are just changing from there to the inside basically. And we are the wallet part basically. So usually the apps and the users use the wallets and from the wallets to the outside, everything is like unchanged ideally. Fantastic. Rafa, did you have anything to, to add to that? Uh, well, I pretty much agree with Miguel. Um, maybe to give a bit of different perspective is, um, as an application developer, you don't have to be focusing on um, how you scale your application, being constantly monitoring the network to find the addresses that are relevant for your users. You just uh, integrate this payment with this extension, which is way more simple than trying to be a scaling um, a massive database of addresses with transactions and all that. Which, so at the end of the day, we are trying to give more um, focus for developers. So they, at the end, they focus on doing what they want to do, which is developing new features or try to find the product market fit or these kind of things that are more important. And, you know, no, don't, don't try to solve this problem again and again of how do I scale my application? It's already solved. Completely. Also, something nice is that, as Rafa said, Paymail is, uses a lot of things that usually every developer knows how to use. Like we use HTTPS, DNS, yeah. and a few of JSON, like things that usually every developer knows how to handle. Uh, like even someone that never interacted with Bitcoin before probably can implement this in a reasonable amount of time. If you need to implement your own address index, for example, that's a lot of work and a lot of things to understand. There is almost no abstraction. You need to understand what is going on. If you use Paymail, you, which even if, again, if you are not an experienced programmer in Bitcoin, you can probably implement this in a reasonable amount of time without having to understand a lot of things. There is can, actually abstractions in this protocol. I can certainly personally attest to that. Um, I have mm -hmm. some questions from our, our, our Baymail list here from John Pitts, um, specifically to Money Button. How can we make money button faster for our apps? So there's a lot of bulk to this question, but I'm going to roughly summarize um, that I'm, I'm kind of curious whether this peer-to-peer -peer -peer implementation makes things faster for the end user. Uh, well, it depends a lot of the kind of thing that you're doing. For example, if you are sending money to a lot of payments on different services, we need to like notify all those people that the transaction is going on. So that can make things slightly uh, slower, for example. And uh, this, so 
it's like it's a change of concepts. In general, what you are for sure going to see is that if you send from one service to the other, the transaction appears faster. That you can notice that, like, uh, because there is no no delay on scanning the blockchain or whatever. Right, or you're not, you don't need to wait until the transaction gets propagated. You just see the transaction appear in the other service. So that's certainly faster. Then regarding of our particular implementation in Manuatan, of course, there are certain things that the app developers can take in consideration for making the button works a little bit faster, but probably are not related to, to the peer-to-peer -peer thing. Uh, like the peer-to-peer -peer thing makes, it's like uh, just an implementation of how to work at the transaction, basically. So Great. I have one, one more question for uh, both um, uh, Rafa, Ivan, uh, and, and Mige. Um, it's more general rather than specifically about peer-to-peer, -peer, but I'll quickly ask it since we have a little bit of time on this topic with you guys. Um, any interest or moves from uh, either of your companies uh, towards threshold signatures? Again, this is uh, a question from John Pitts. I would just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Fantastic. Good to hear. Uh, this like threshold signatures is something extremely interest, uh, interesting and um, i'm sure that eventually we're going to use them for something even if i know exactly what uh, and i would love to provide some kind of cool developer api to use uh, threshold signatures uh, i don't know probably we need to find something that happens is that of course that we are a lot, uh, driven by use cases basically um I don't know if, if in this exact moment there is like there is for sure not a lot of people asking uh, for that right now. So we'll see. Well, back to back to peer to peer. There's actually a question from our audience in the webinar. Um, so hand cash money button peer to peer payments are already exchanged SPV uh, with SPV proofs today, as in um, Merkle paths and uh, Merkle root proofs uh, all attached is can you confirm this uh, do peer to peer payments already work between money button and hand cash no they we are not work. we are like both wallets which are 100% of the time online right if 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 our infrastructure goes offline wallets are away so there's not huge amount of value of, of at the moment for us to to exchange um, merkle proofs but there is a, a field which is called metadata where those things can be added for those wallets or those channels where Merkle proofs would be useful. At this point, when we receive transaction, we basically just ask miners to verify it and to accept it. And later, maybe 20 minutes later, we can ask if that transaction got confirmed because that's the most simple um, operation you can do with the miners, which is the most fast and the most efficient. And we don't need nothing on top of it, right? Uh, SPV check is on top of I2, IP to IP. But we could also do offline checks, like with Merkle proofs, uh, check if this transaction is actually valid. But that's also implicitly done by miners when we give them transactions. So there's not real value for us to do it at this point. Ah, my mistake. So I, I misunderstood exactly what your implementation was in that case. Um, interesting. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Um, and unless there are any more questions that Ryan wants to ask on, on this topic, I'm going to pass over to um, Ryan because I know you have some questions potentially for for Craig, and I believe Craig's joined us at this point. 